Look at this cute little whiskey. The bottle's so tiny. But it does pack a punch because it comes in at over 51% alcohol. What? This week, we're going to try out Nika from the barrel. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Matt. I'm the Whiskey Nerd. I'm Rose and I'm the Whiskey Nerd. And like we said, we're going to try out Nika from the Barrel, Ooh. which is a Japanese whiskey from, obviously, Japan. And it comes in a very nice little bottle, only 500 ml, but it does pack a bit of a punch because it comes in at 51.4% alcohol. Mm, do you know why the bottle's so tiny? I think it's just kind of, uh, some Japanese whiskeys, like the, I think the, one of the first whiskey ever released in Japan, I'll put a picture of it up there, was released in a, like a square bottle. So I think it might be like trying to be a bit traditional, but also oh. if it's in a smaller bottle, because alcohol is taxed by like the amount of alcohol that's in it, yeah. you can sell this for about the same price as you can sell like a 700 ml bottle of lower strength. Oh! So that way it can kind of compete with other whiskies around, you know, if you have a whiskey at 40% in a higher, in a larger bottle, you can have a smaller whiskey but with more ABV to it. Okay! And it also just comes, it's very, it's very distinctive. It's very, if you see this, you go, ah, that's Nika from the barrel, the kind of minimalist label and stuff. Yeah. We actually lived in Japan. Yeah, we did. For a few years. And this was one of my staples over there. Mm, I think I remember that one a bit. Yeah, it, it's just, it's a solid little whiskey. Very easy to drink. It is a blended whiskey, however. Oh. And unfortunately, it might not be 100% Japanese whiskey because there was a bit of a controversy there a little while ago where Japanese whiskey isn't maybe, it doesn't have to be made in Japan. Now, the new rules that come in say it has to be made in Japan, distilled, matured, ate, all that stuff in Japan. Mm -hmm. The old rules just said it has to be bottled in Japan. So some distilleries, when they started running low on supplies, were taking whiskey from other countries. And so in this case, this whiskey, I think it includes a little bit of Scotch whiskey. Oh! Yeah, so Nika, there's two main distilleries in Japan, like uh, Yamaza, uh, sorry, Suntory and Nika. And Nika is a little bit more close to Scotch whiskey in their styles. Oh my, I'm a little scared of Scotch whiskey. Yeah, but they've used kind of lighter whiskeys. I mean, it is a blend of malt and grain whiskeys. It might have been just the grain whiskey from Scotland. They don't say really a lot of details about yeah, it. Yeah, like, like, oh, it just says a whiskey, and it says moderato, malt and grain so grain yeah it's, malt and grain it's very it's it's very easy to drink whiskey easy to find in japan but it's not the most transparent of whiskeys oh it's i from what i've been able to find out it's mostly japanese whiskey with some uh, international whiskey and it's been aged in bourbon and all also sherry casks but that's about it that's so all it's I, a mystery whiskey. so it's a little bit of a mystery but it is a very easy to drink whiskey so mm -hmm. i think we might go in for the nose on the nika from the barrel Despite coming in at 51.4%, like that's 102 proof, it's kind of light. It is light. It's fruity. I'm trying, yeah, there's like a light fruitiness. There's a good bit of apple almost coming out. Yeah, I get a little bit of alcoholiness, but that yeah. could be because of 50. Over 50%, oh. yeah, it's, it's pretty high. Yeah, it's very like sweet. It is, it's like almost honeyed with a little bit of like, if you think of like, um, like apples and pears that have almost been stewed in some honey. Oh, okay. Where it's like really like rich and thick, but getting that at all. Oh, what do you think? It's very light. So mm -hmm. it's like almost like a berry, but like not a fully ripe mm. berry with very like light tongue flavor. So it's not tart. Yeah. It's just like a very light berry that I cannot name. Yeah, that's probably the like the sherry influence coming to it because okay. there will be some all rows of sherry. Sometimes you get from that kind of plums or blackberries or blueberries or yeah. some fruits like that. So you get something like that. Like if that. you take blueberry and then you take the skin off, then you usually mm, have less flavor yeah. in there. So it kind of reminds me of that. Yeah, I'm getting maybe a touch of smoke. Like not, oh. not a huge amount of peace, but like almost like the earthy kind of smell of not a like burning peat not that peat smoke but like of just like a peat log that's just sitting there not over the power earthen powering. oven an earthen oven yeah. yeah like an oven made out of earth oh like a clay oven or yes like yeah okay i can see a little that. bit of that yeah there's not like a huge amount of smoke not a huge amount of peat just that kind of a little bit of earthiness yeah, yeah yeah so i think we'll go in for the palette and see what we get okay cheers can buy can buy Wow, that's real different. Yeah, the the nose. Oh wow, 
That's, that's real different from the nose. Yes. Yeah. Nose, very light, very, like, that's, there's actual sh like sugar. Yeah, it's really sweet. It's really sweet. Also, the ABV, you get the heat, you get the bit of a like a tingle in your mouth. Yeah. Not a huge amount of burn, more in the in the mouth. Yeah, that yeah. was like honey, thick honey in there. Yeah. But there is something else at the edge. It wasn't like a burn, like you said. But I, it was a little like, was it maybe the smoky? I think heat? yeah. There's or a, my earthen clay oven. Yeah, I think there's a bit more of the smoke, the peat on the palate. I'm gonna go in for another sip. I feel like it just got slapped by the whiskey. That was such an abrupt change. Where does that come from? There's definitely smokiness in there. Yeah, I kind of chewed it there a little bit. Definitely some smokiness. But still, like you were saying, that kind of blue, almost I'm getting like almost like a darker fruit, almost like a Ooh, like a cherry, blackberry. blackberry, that kind of deeper. Like a good ripened fruit. Yeah, like that kind of. Unripened on the nose, ripened on the palate. Yeah, I think like with the ABV, the, the higher alcohol, it's definitely delivered a bit more oomph. Oh yeah, oomph. Oomph, oomph. On, the, on the palate. With, I'm getting a little bit of oak as well. Oh, I can't like, really taste oak unless it's American virgin oak and yeah. then I don't like it. And then you're like, but it's a bit more like almost tingly oak spice. Oh! Almost like a, you can sometimes get like cocoa, like dark chocolate. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah I get like that. Yeah, like dark chocolate kind of, yeah. <gasps> oh, okay, yes. Yeah, do you want to go for another sip? Yes. Okay, so I'm getting like a little bit of, like I said, I'm getting that kind of really like high cocoa, dark chocolate where you get almost like, a little bit of like acidity where you get that yeah when you have that really like 95 percent cocoa dark chocolate yeah and you get that almost like acid kind of yes flavor. yeah i wouldn't call it acid not acid but you know that kind of sharpness. like a dark chocolate yeah that kind of sharpness oh you get it with some like coffees like an espresso oh you yeah get that same kind of like sharp kind of tang tang what else you get i know that's what i thought it's just such it's just i'm just in shock I am in shock because it was such an abrupt change and I was not expecting it to be that like thick yeah. and sweet based off of the nose. Yeah, because a lot of the Japanese whiskeys I've had you try recently, they were well, they were from Suntory, so a different kind of profile to the Nika, but very different profile. Much yeah. they were always they were always much lighter. Like the uh, Yamazaki, the Hibiki, the Hakushu, they were all very light and yeah. pretty. This is much more of like, as you said, like a slap in the face. Yeah. Again, probably from that ABV. Oh. But it does have, like, Nika has a different kind of profile. Yeah, but slap in the face, not just like the ABV, but just like the profile, like the flavor profile. It's just like, wow, you're here. Yeah, it's also, I think, lasting a little bit longer than the other Japanese whiskeys we've tried. So yeah. let's go in again, but talk to the finish. Okay. Cheers. Kanpai. I think definitely the ABV, the alcohol definitely helps it stick around. Like as I'm talking, I'm still f tasting it. A lot of the other whiskeys kind of fell off a cliff. Ah. This is, it's more of a gradual decline. You get that smokiness, almost like, almost like salinity, like, like sea salt, kind of like, same, almost like a little savory note. Okay. With that dark chocolate that I was getting kind of, okay. yeah. Okay. I feel like a warmth. Like, that's probably down to the ABV, but it's not like a boom, there's alcohol. It's like a nice, slow warmth. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like, due to sweetness, it's almost like a thick honey. So it kind of just yeah. like coats your throat and it's this like thick warmth. Yeah, like it's definitely, yeah, I can feel it. Like yeah. the, it's it's warming. It is kind of like- Good for winter when you want to cuddle winter. up. Yeah, cuddle up with a whiskey or maybe a husband. Or maybe a wife. Or maybe a wife. <laughs> But yeah, it's it's a nice little whiskey. I think it's one of the better ones. Like, like it's I know it's not 100% Japanese whiskey, or maybe they're moving towards making it 100% yes. Japanese whiskey. But as far as I'm aware, this bottle isn't 100% Japanese. But it's 100% yum. It's 100% yum. I always when I, when we lived in Japan, I always had a bottle of this on the shelf because it's just easy to drink. It's very tasty. You can pour yourself a nice glass with. Yeah. Because it's got a nice bit of ABV, it kind of you can sit with it a while. You can sip it. Yeah. So, now. Would this be sacrilege if I made the suggestion that this get put into a hot cocoa? Into a hot cocoa? It might not be sacrilege, it's just a, an expensive hot cocoa. <laughs> but it's not sacrilege. <laughs> Whatever way you want to drink your whiskey is the way you can drink your whiskey. Hot cocoa. But this is, um, what do we call it? Oh yeah, my whiskey. So you can drink your whiskey. What's yours is mine, what's <laughs> mine is mine. <laughs> Uh, speaking of mine and my other whiskeys, we put out whiskey reviews every Wednesday. We put out cocktails featuring whiskey every Friday. So if you want to see more like that, 
make sure you scroll down, hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button. Let us know what kind of Japanese whiskey you think Rose should try next. But in the meantime, we're going to keep on enjoying the Nika from the barrel. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Sláinte.